From the studios in Bentonville, Arkansas, you're listening to Ethan Walton's Retail Supplier Podcast. Each week, we discuss the issues facing Walmart suppliers and bring you solutions from industry experts. Visit us online at ethanwalton.com if you have questions about today's podcast. And now your host, Jared Davis. Thank you for downloading our little show again this week. You know, I love podcasts like the one that we're doing today because we're going to talk about a few things that you may have missed. I mean, as as a Walmart supplier, especially this time of year, you've got enough on your plate with just your day-to-day business. So it's very easy to miss a Walmart announcement or an update to a process or the rollout of a new program. So what we're going to do today is talk about some of the things that all suppliers need to be aware of as we jump into the holiday rush. And we're going to talk about some of the more frequent questions that our Walmart advisors tackle each week. Now, don't forget, if you are a Walmart supplier and you'd like a free consultation about any of the issues that your team is facing, all you have to do is click the link in our podcast description or just go to 8thandwalton.com slash contact. All right, let's jump into it. You know, whenever you do request a free consultation, one of the advisors you may speak with is my friend and our guest today, Ethan Walton's Director of Retail Link and Sam's Club Insights, Mr. Joel Graham. Buddy, it is great to have you back on the podcast. Thank you, Jared. Glad to be back. Joel, let's jump right in with some of the changes that are going on at Walmart. I know you're talking with suppliers every week. So what are some of the things that Walmart suppliers really need to be aware of as we go into the fourth quarter? Well, it's almost too much to keep up with. You know, we pride ourselves in being students of retail and and learning all the time. I mean, it is a constant learning process. One of the things that Walmart announced that I was a little bit surprised about was this collect pickup program, customer pickup program, whatever you want to call it, CPP, where collect suppliers are now being asked to pay for part of the fuel and a surcharge for that particular department, varying in small percentages, 0.75% you know, to 3%, but that is becoming an additional cost of doing business with Walmart for a collect supplier in a collect environment, which is a little surprising. Some of the other things that we're seeing is uh, item 360, uh, the item creation management tool. There's some changes being made to that. And recent changes have been made to that. Uh, one of the nice ones is there's a Canadian dropdown now. So it looks like the product is going to almost an international status I don't think the functionality is quite 100% yet. Some of the pages load up blank, but there is a drop down, and I can get to the Canadian side of that. The other thing is in the .com environment in item 360, they're really getting more focused on making sure that when an item is introduced into the environment, that it's introduced with a more robust .com content. For example, previously, you would only have to have one main image. Now you have to have four. Previously, you did not have to have key attributes, the bullets in the about this item, now you have to have four. And then there's a whole slew of other requirements now, ingredients and counts and things of that nature. And those vary depending on whether you're food or general merchandise. Uh, so that's a fairly significant amount of change right there. Well, and I want to ask you specifically about CPP. Those additional charges to the suppliers Had they already hit some of the suppliers you're speaking with? And what can other suppliers expect as we get closer to holiday? Yeah, we've seen some pretty significant charges. You know, they're not just three-digit or six-digit numbers. I've seen some seven-digit numbers. So that's fairly significant. I don't know that that was the expectation to charge a supplier seven digits for one month on the cost of transportation. It seems like Walmart may be taking a pause in it. I'm not really sure. We're just really observing and watching and waiting for the next announcement. Uh, but right after they made the announcement and right after they made those charges show up in high radius, it's been kind of quiet. So we're waiting and watching and seeing for what that is going forward. You know, you'd mentioned Walmart Item 360 launching in Canada. And I remember when we were talking about this a few months ago, for suppliers working with Walmart Canada who may not be familiar with Walmart Item 360, what can they expect? Well, you know, contrary to some people's opinions of 360, see, I'm a fan of Item 360. They've done a really good job. Yes, it has its faults and yes, it has its hiccups. But overall, compared to what it used to be, Uh, online item file, and then supplier center, 
and then bit back before that spreadsheets. It, it's a light years uh, advancement. I think the Canadian suppliers will see the same thing. They're going to go from emailing a spreadsheet called a NIC form, new item creation, to someone at Walmart, which then everyone knows that email goes into a black hole. We don't ever know if someone's actually working on it or, and so we have to wait and wait and wait. With item 360, with the functionality it has, you know, you have the activity manager. You can see that it says Walmart action required. You can communicate to Walmart exactly what that activity ID is and they can go find it and approve your information. So there's a lot more slickness to the item creation process and a lot more technical functionality that they'll gain from that. It's going to be a really good improvement for them. Joel, I know you and your team, one of the most critical issues that you work with Walmart suppliers on each week is their accounting, those chargebacks and uh, avoiding penalties and even helping them dispute fines. What's new with Walmart's accounting process and uh, what are you and your team seeing there on the front line? Well, that is a, that's a hot topic um, and has been for a long time and will continue to be for a long time. Uh, you know, we're, we're seeing this this high radius application that's standalone accounts receivable app where Walmart says, hey, you owe some money, whether that's a fine or whatever that might be, marketing, whatever type of charges that Walmart feels that you owe them. Within that, we're seeing deductions in APIS, Accounts Payable Invoice System, where a charge will come through for a shortage or some type of uh, no POD, products just didn't show up. Uh, we'll dispute that charge and then get paid back pretty quickly. And then shortly, maybe a week or two after that, we'll see another deduction for that exact same shortage, for that exact same PO, uh, for that same invoice. And the quantities that were challenged in the first deduction are now being restated under a different deduction code, such as concealed shortage or concealed damage. That makes it really difficult to dispute because I can't really say if it's a concealed shortage, I can't prove that, right? That's much different than having a POD where I have a signed piece of paper that says, yeah, they picked up all 30 pieces. So we're seeing that activity and it's interesting to see, but uh, we're keeping an eye, a close eye on it. One of the Walmart programs that I know you get quite a few questions about each week is SQEP, Walmart's Supplier Quality Excellence Program. So as we're about to jump into the fourth quarter, are there any updates coming or any additional rollouts to the program that suppliers need to be looking for? No, not any real significant changes. You know, it seems like it's kind of leveled out a little bit. We're seeing a little bit more activity on the automated DCs where the robotics are taking pictures and sending those in. There's a little bit of an accuracy issue with that right now. And they're aware of that and they're working on it. What I kind of do like though, and this is also really thoughtful of, of Walmart to put this together this way, but when you go to Retail Link, you can go and log into the SQEP dashboard, or you can go and log into the ASN dashboard or log into the OTIF dashboard. But what they've done is they've made that one holistic toggle where if you log into OTIF, at the top of OTIF, there's a drop down, and now there's four of those. There's OTIF, I can toggle to SQUEP, I can toggle to ASN, and I can toggle to the Collect Pickup Program CPP. The CPP takes me back to Retail Link, so it's not quite functional yet. But the fact that I can move back and forth between the two and I don't have to leave one app and go to another, that's a great move on their part. I know sometimes when Walmart suppliers hear that changes are happening at Walmart, there can be kind of a negative connotation at first. But going into this fourth quarter, there's some really positive things happening as it pertains to Walmart.com. And this is going to be great for the holiday shopping season. Joel, how are the Walmart.com item pages changing for hosting content? Well, yes, they are focusing a lot more on content and, you know, rightfully so. Amazon does a good job of listing items and having a holistic page. Uh, it's very important for suppliers to remember, it's not just about whether or not you want to sell on .com. I want you to be discovered on .com. Walmart wants you to be found on .com. Someone may be looking at their smartphone on Friday night, intending to go to the store Saturday, and they're just trying to determine, does the store have this item in stock? Does the item have a listing at all? Is the listing robust and, and welcoming? The other thing that you'll see in the future is sometimes you go to websites and it'll say, hurry, only two left. Walmart will be utilizing that as they roll out uh, RFID because RFID will be able to say, yes, there's two in the store, whatever that number is. 
and that should be able to systematically feed to the listing and provide the consumer a lot more realistic results. That also helps when the store is out of stock. Maybe I don't even see the listing because there's nothing there for me to see anyway or go by, or it may say out of stock. Uh, so that would be, would be some nice improvements going forward into the future. Joel, I know you and your team are talking with Walmart suppliers each week about different issues, but what's one of the biggest concerns you're hearing from suppliers about going into this year's holiday shopping season? Well, there's there's a fair amount of them. Um, one of the most hot topics right now and has been for a long time is accounting. You know, I'm not getting paid. I'm not winning disputes. How do I win disputes? How do I avoid the cost of the dispute in the first place? Is there something I'm doing in my shipping environment? The other thing is I'm getting a fair amount of suppliers that are onboarding. They got the yes. They're trying to figure out what their next steps are. They're trying to figure out how do I fill out this, this form to become a real supplier? What do I need for insurance? All these things. So there's a lot of need for guidance there. Uh, with that, there's also a lot of need for, you know, not, not every supplier builds an item every year. They may be able to build an item once a year, maybe once every two years. Uh, so if that's the situation, I get these calls where people say, I'm really stuck. I really don't know what I'm doing in item 360. And rather than spending countless hours of agony in this thing, can I just have you help me walk through the process? And so that's a big relief for a lot of them as well. Um, one more thing. I don't think it's a secret that Walmart has a lot of heavy inventory right now in their stores. And we're seeing that through social media groups, uh, lots of comments, uh, whether that's uh, store associates or suppliers or just consumers in general. Hey, I, I found a whole buggy of items for a dollar, uh, just, you know, really super big markdowns. I am concerned and I think it's worth talking about is as we go into the fourth quarter and as the inventories ramp up, and I'm already seeing Christmas coming into the stores now, you know, we, we haven't got through uh, Thanksgiving or, or Halloween yet, but as we see these holiday flows come in, keep an eye on the, the stores because right now with that heavy inventory and you know, my local store, when I go and drive behind the store, there's 15 or 20 shipping containers back there full of merchandise that they can't, they don't have the room to get out and into the store. Uh, so that's just a real topic right now. And people can do some research on it. It's, it's in the news all over the place, but that will be something to keep an eye on is the level of inventory in the stores and how those stores can manage through that with labor and inventory costs and markdowns and all of that. Well, we're going to end this podcast with some very good news. If you are a Walmart supplier and you can relate to any of the issues you've heard us talk about today, you can go to the link in our description to request a free 15-minute consultation with Joel Graham or one of the Walmart advisors on his team, or just go right to 8andwalton.com slash contact. Fill out that very quick form and someone will get in contact with you within the next couple of days. Joel Graham, thank you so much for joining us on the show today, sir. My pleasure, Jerry.